I want to share with you now a familiar story. And as I share this story with you, I want you to hear it with brand new ears. Not like, oh yeah, yeah, I know that one, okay. But I want you to imagine this is your daughter. This is your sister. This is your niece. This is your student. And just put yourself in that position as you hear this wonderful story from Mary and how she responds to the challenges God placed in her, literally. Let us hear this word. In those days, Mary sent, set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts of their hearts, and he has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promises he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, to his descendants forever. May God bless the reading of this word. A group of first graders decided that they would write their own Christmas play. There is a very brave teacher right there. So it was the typical Christmas pageant, but they modernized it a bit. There was Joseph, and there were the shepherds, and there was the angel, and there was the star, and the manger, and the whole scene, but you couldn't find Mary anywhere. Audience was kind of looking around, it got quiet, and then behind the haystack, you heard some moaning and some groaning. <laughs> Evidently, Mary was in labor. Joseph is pacing back and forth, and then walks in a doctor with a white robe, right, right coat, stethoscope, and he goes behind the haystack for a few moments, he disappears, and then he comes out with a smile on his face, and he comes up to Joseph and says, congratulations, it's a god. <clears throat> <laughs> And it is all so cute when we see it like that, isn't it? But think of the reality of the situation. Mary was probably 14, 15, maybe 16 years old. And where she lived in the world at this time, for a young girl, a young woman, to be pregnant without being married was a very bad thing. The consequences of that could be death. If you remember the way the story goes, Joseph is thinking about putting her away quietly. He didn't want to embarrass her any more than what she already was. And so what do you do with a child who's pregnant and who's not supposed to be pregnant at this time? Well, you send her off to the relatives. And so she goes to her cousin Elizabeth. And when she heard Mary's voice, the baby within Elizabeth leaped for joy. And then you see this wonderful, beautiful exchange between these two women. Now this is significant too, because in the first century, women didn't have a lot of power. Their purpose was to have babies so that the men could be fruitful and multiply. And here you have two women who are experiencing miraculous births, coming together, celebrating, 
this wonderful blessing that God has given them. And I think it's so interesting that when you look at other stories in the Bible where God has called a prophet like Moses, for example, Moses spent hours and hours and hours, almost wore God out, giving God all the reasons why Moses could not do this. But what happens when this young woman, who gets this strange vision and message from Gabriel, which in Hebrew means God's hero, you're going to have a child. And she says, here I am, Lord, your handmaid, you see. No wonder she gave birth to Jesus, because he would need a mother like that, wouldn't he? A woman who, a young girl who, in spite of all the cultural norms, would have to be extremely courageous. And not only courageous in the giving of the birth, but also being at the end at the cross. So she and Elizabeth come together and they celebrate. And how do they celebrate what's going on? They sing a song. My soul magnifies the Lord. Now, we live in a day and age where there is a harsh reality before us 24 hours a day. That harsh reality is bad news sells. Right? In my research, I found out that Paul Harvey, you all, some of you remember Paul Harvey? What was his little tagline for the rest of the story? Something like that. Um, his, he tried to start a news program with nothing but good news. It lasted 13 weeks. There was a newspaper that tried to have a paper that reported nothing but good news. It was out of business in six weeks. Bad news sells. So, a pregnant teenager doesn't make the news, right? But a pregnant teenager who's the daughter of a vice presidential candidate, that's news, right? Young people in their 20s who volunteer and give of themselves to boys, uh, girls clubs and boys clubs across America, who give themselves to the Peace Corps and go all over the world, who go on mission trips, who go to Tallahassee and work in food pantries, who go, and like our young people, and go to places and fix up playgrounds for the homeless. And that doesn't make the news, does it? But one young man, 20 years old, who's mentally ill, slaughters a bunch of children in school. That's news. That's news. And it's distressing news, isn't it? When I heard it for the first time, it was distressing. But then when I saw the pictures, their little bright faces, and heard their names, and discovered that they liked the color pink, or one took up archery because she saw the movie Brave, one fellow wanted to be a fireman. All of a sudden, it gets personal, doesn't it? And when you hear about the school principal and the teachers who had no chance of succeeding with a young man with a semi-automatic, high-powered military rifle, risked their lives to try to do something to get him to stop and lost their lives in the process. It's almost too much to bear, isn't it? It's sad news. It's sad news. And what happens when you find out you have cancer and your treatments are making you very sick? What happens when you find out your daughter, who is 31 years old, has a heart attack and has almost died? What happens as you approach the holidays and you're missing your own child? What happens as you're missing those whom you love the most? Not? It's sometimes it can become so overwhelming. What do we do? We sing. We sing. And we celebrate God's mighty hand and God's mighty arm even in times when we feel like maybe God has abandoned us the most. That's what we do. Mary and Elizabeth celebrate 
that God has brought down the high and the mighty and has lifted up the lowly. I want to read to you a quote from a journalist named Roger Rosenblatt, and he wrote it to Rachel Scott, who was one of the victims of the Colorado sh school shootings. He writes, I have never believed that life is revealed in its cataclysmic moments, its wake-up calls, but rather in res repose, when people go about the quieter business of being who they are. Journalists tend to turn to where the noise is. One of the things your death bequeaths is a reminder to look where the noise is not. One can tell far more interesting things about a crowd at a picnic than a mob in the streets, or about someone like you when you were writing poems and performing in school plays, or just dreaming without a sound, than when murder made you a national symbol. I want you to know, and I want you to hear my words, that even in the midst of the bad news and all the noise which we get obliterated with every single day, the good news is this. God does God's miracles and God's work, and you're living out your life quietly every day. Mary was minding her own business, doing what young girls do in the first century, when she received a visitation from Gabriel, an angel, and said, you're going to give birth to God's son. Just quiet night. Joseph, living his life, doing what he needed to do, wasn't expecting it. Small town, we're talking about Nazareth, little bitty town, tiny little town, just going about their business. Elizabeth and Zechariah already given up hope that they could have children because they were up in their years. Doing their business, living their quiet life, and God chooses the least likely to do the most miraculous things. When we find ourselves in times of trouble, Mother Mary speaks to me. <laughs> let it be, let it be, let it be. How do we get through these tough times? How do we get through times when not only the, the, the people in our nation and around the world are suffering, but when we ourselves are suffering? How do we get through these times? We sing a song. I remember one time a person who was reflecting on the civil rights movement, and they asked her, how in the world did you keep it up when so much was against you? Your people were suffering. You were getting beat up. You were getting... Uh, doused with fire hoses, you were being attacked by dogs, you were marching and walking day after day, your feet had to hurt. How did you do it? How did you keep the stamina? How did you follow through on it? And her response was immediate. We had a song to sing. Our singing brought us all the way through. So for those of you here today who are battling depression, how are you going to get through the holiday season? I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but Christmas brings out the, the, the most depressed of the depressed. If you're missing someone that you love dearly and they're not here for the season, how do you get through? If you've just been diagnosed, how do you get through? If you're not sure where your children are, how do you get through? If you're distressed about our brothers and sisters all across the nation, how do we get through? What do we do? What do we do? We sing. We sing. What do we sing? Today we're going to sing Away in the Manger. It's right there in your bulletin, if you don't know the words. But we sing. Sing with me. It will make you all feel better. Because in the singing, it strengthens us. It reminds us that God is working in and through us to become the miracle in the world, to balance out the crazy and the noise. And what better way to celebrate God's mighty strength and how God changed the world through a baby than sing a little song called Away in the Manger. Away in the manger, Lord. 
small and quiet to the world to change the world and make it more like God go with peace and purpose but before we do let us sing together come, come let us adore him